The Pieces Lie Where They Fell by Anon E. Mouse Jr. Edited and co-authored by Evil Humor. Chapter 37 Page Turner, Vix Lee, Windbreaker, Rex, and Nightblade Part 1 Page Turner Thank you. Come again. The gray-skinned girl nodded as she adjusted her bow tie. You are very welcome, Miss Turner. Picking up her book and cello case, she left the library, and Paige watched her go, a smile on her face. It had been quiet most of the time since she'd started working in the library. Miss Cheerily had finished putting away all but a few stacks of books, which she'd handled easily. Apparently, this world used the same Dewey Hoof, oh, Dewey Hoof decimal system as Equestria, although it went by a different name from the looks of things. The girl, one Octavia Melody, had been the only one to come in since then, so she'd had plenty of time to finish the shelving. There had been some confusion when she decided, oh, when she had to handle the school's computers as they were apparently called, but Octavia had been very happy to help her with those. She'd been a little surprised when Paige admitted to having never used one before, but this had worn off quickly. As she turned to go back to looking around, she felt something bump into the back of her leg, and turned to look down. Huh? It was a small white rabbit, which looked up at her with a confused look on its face. Where do you come from, little guy? she asked, reaching out to pick the animal up. The rabbit just twitched its nose, then settled into her arms as she began stroking its back. Oh! a soft voice suddenly squeaked. Angel, come back here! A moment later, a willowy figure came around the corner, and Paige's eyes widened. The girl looking at her had long pink hair, yellow skin, blue eyes, and an equally startled look on her face. I... I'm sorry, miss. I know I'm not supposed to have animals on campus, but... but... Paige smiled. It's okay, miss... Oh, um, I'm Fluttershy, the girl said, reaching out to take the rabbit. Paige reluctantly handed him over and watched as Fluttershy began fussing over her pet. Thank you so much for finding Angel. It's no problem. Paige said, even as her thoughts whirled. How is this possible? She thought to herself. He's a cute little fellow. Thank you, Fluttershy said softly, smiling back. Then her eyes turned to her rabbit. Now, you know you're not supposed to run off like that, she scolded the bunny lightly. You might run into someone who could get you into a lot of trouble. Angel just twitched his nose at her, then hopped into her backpack. Fluttershy blushed a little, then looked over at Paige. Say, I never got your name. It's Paige Turner, Paige told her. I'm helping out in the library for a few days. Oh, well, nice to meet you, and good luck. Turning, Fluttershy ran back around the corner, leaving the changeling hybrid turned human to look contemplative. If she's here, I wonder if the others are too she thought to herself. I need to tell the others as soon as I can. Oh. Part 2. Vixley. Vixley stared at the boy in front of her, who was just as muscular as she was. Class had started rather well, as the teacher, a burly-looking fellow named Iron Will, had introduced her to the students as his new assistant. Then they'd started their individual projects, which she had examined as each started work. Some of them were making bowls that looked pretty elaborate. A few were doing cutting boards that required her to stop them from maiming themselves. And at least one student was working on what looked like a bench, although that was up to interpretation. There were a few others huddled around one corner who looked to be discussing blueprints for something that she couldn't quite make out. Finally, after one of the students had finished for the day and put his bowls and other equipment away, 
he had stopped in front of her and given her an even look. Then he started flexing. Vixley grinned and started flexing back to the amusement of a few of the students as well as the teacher. The two flexed at one another. As the two flexed at one another, the rest of the students, who had also finished putting their projects away, started watching. Finally, the boy grunted and with a loud, Yeah! stuck out his hand. That was awesome! Vixley grinned. That's what I was going to say. The boy grinned back as they shook hands. I'm bulk biceps, ma'am. Vixley, but you already know that. Yeah! The, just then, the bell rang, signaling the end of class. Aw, oh, man! Bulk groaned. Then his face brightened. See you next class! Looking forward to it, Bulky! Vix Lee gave him a friendly slap on the back, causing him to stumble a bit before he grabbed his stuff and took off. As the other students followed him out the door, Vix Lee grinned even wider. I knew I was going to like this thick gig she remarked to no tar in particular. No kidding, a voice chimed in from behind her. That was the absolutest, funnest, and funniest thing I've seen in this class this whole year. Popcorn? Vix Lee turned to see the person talking to her, and did a double take. The first thing she saw was a familiar, pink, poofy hairstyle. The second was a grin bigger than hers and Bulky's put together. And the third was the box the girl was holding as she munched. Uh, when did you get in here? she asked, dumbfounded. And how did I not see you before? The girl with the popcorn appeared to grin even wider, if that was even physically possible. But before she could speak, another voice interjected. She's Pinkie Pie. She does that. Yuppers, Pinkie grinned. Thanks, Mr. Will. Anyway, I gotta get to study hall. Miss Harshwinnie is a real stickler when it comes to being on time. Her hair deflated just a tad. Then she grinned and bounced out of the room. That pinky, Mr. Will sighed. She's one of Iron Will's best students, but he'll never understand her. There was a smile on his face as he said it, though, and Vix Lee nodded. She seems like a nice girl, she commented. Oh, she is, he said. One of the happiest kids in this school. Almost everyone likes her, even the ones who keep to themselves most of the time will smile when she's in the room. She even made Mr. Doodle smile once, and he's one of the grumpiest people Iron Will knows. Ahem, he coughed. You didn't hear that from Iron Will, though. Somehow, that does not surprise me, Vixley chuckled. And aye aye, Captain! She threw him a salute, which got her a chuckle in return. By the way, thank... By the way, thanks for the great job you did in here today. Why, thank you, kind sir. Vix Lee did a small bow before turning around and heading off to find the guys to tell them about finding Pinkie Pie. Whatever this place was, something was beyond weird. Beyond the already weirdness. Part 3. Windbreaker Windbreaker shifted the tools on his back again as he walked down the hall. You'd think they could at least sen have sent some po- er, someone with me, he grumbled to himself. Ah, well. Things had gone well in the classroom where they were building the sets, beyond the few odd looks he got from the female students, until the drama teacher had sent Windbreaker to fetch a couple tools from one of the storage rooms now he was on his way back. Suddenly, another student rounded the corner in front of him, and Windbreaker, trying to step out of their way, inadvertently smacked right into them. Ow! Then, seeing the look the student was giving him, his face reddened. Sorry about that. Are you all right? The boy nodded. Yup. Seeing, stepping around Windbreaker, he continued on his way, leaving the griffin turned human to scratch his head. Okay, then, he blinked. Is he always like that? he wondered aloud. Sure as shootin' is, a female voice with a distinctive twang to it said as a girl rounded the same corner as the boy. Windbreaker's blood ran cold. He knew that voice. 
Then the girl lowered the boxes she was carrying, and Windbreaker's jaw dropped. The skin might be a different color, but she had the same hair, the same hat, and the same expression on her face. Name's Applejack, she said as she shifted the boxes. Er, I'd offer to shake hands, but I'm a little preoccupied right now. It's no problem, Windbreaker said faintly. I'm Windbreaker. Applejack blinked. Your folks named you after a coat? Windbreaker blinked back. A what? A coat, you know, like the kind you're wearing. Uh, Windbreaker facepalmed as it hit him. I can't believe I never got that, he sighed. Actually, I never knew there was a type of coat called a Windbreaker, he thought to himself. Almost everyone who hears my name makes the obvious crude jokes. Well, that ain't right, Applejack said firmly. So where are you off to? I ain't seen you here in school before. I'm one of the new teacher's assistants they just hired, actually, Windbreaker told her. They've got me helping the drama club out right now. Applejack smiled. Well, that sure is a good thing of you, she said. My little sister and a couple of her yearmates are looking to try out that next semester. Well, I hope they enjoy themselves, Windbreaker smiled back. Then something occurred to him. Say, that boy from before, is he your brother? Yup, Applejack said. Name's Big Macintosh, but we just call him Big Mac. He doesn't talk much now, but if you ever need someone to listen to, he's your guy. She shifted her load again. Well, I hate to run, but I got to get this stuff down to the gym. See you around. She tilted her head, then continued on her way. Windbreaker watched her go, and shook his head. Well, there's one question answered, he thought to himself. And now I have a bunch more in its place. Making a mental note to tell the others about this, he headed back to the drama club's room, thoughts whirling in his mind. Part 4. Rex Well, class, does anyone know the answer? Professor Bill Nay asked. Miss Bloom, how about you? Do you know the difference between lava and magma? Um, magma is what it's called when it's still under the ground. Lava is what it's called when it's come out of a volcano and is on the surface? The red-headed girl asked hesitantly. That is correct! Professor Ney exclaimed. Just then, the bell rang, and he looked up in surprise. Well, remember your homework tonight, kids. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some square roots to calculate. See ya! With that, he dashed out of the room, with several students following him. In the back, Rex smiled from his own seat. This had been a most entertaining class to observe. Excuse me, a small voice asked. Looking up, Rex saw three girls, one of whom had given the answer to the professor's question. A second had white skin and two shades of grayish-pink hair and a third with orange skin and Charisse hair, and was carrying a helmet under one arm. Thanks for the help you gave us with those worksheets earlier, Mr. Rex, the one with the pink hair said. Please, just call me Rex, the former Diamond Dog said smoothly, already mentally prepared for this and what would come next. And it was no trouble at all, Miss Bell. The girl made a face. That's Sweetie Bell, she said. Miss Bell is my sister, though she prefers rarity. Of course, Rex replied. I sure look f oh, I look forward to meeting her. Sweetie Bell smiled. I'm sure she'd love to meet you too, she said. In fact, there she is. She pointed toward the door, where a tall, white-skinned girl with a familiar-looking hairstyle was standing, a pleasant smile on her face. Ah, Rex said as he stood, so you are young Sweetie Belle's sister. The girl nodded as she walked in. I am indeed, she said, and you must be Professor Ney's new assistant. He couldn't stop raving about you when he passed me in the halls. Quite, Rex replied. He does seem a bit eccentric, but the man is also a genius. That he is. Rarity replied. 
Oh, she added as she saw the three girls still standing there. You should probably run along now, she told them. All right, Sweetie Belle grumbled. Then her eyes brightened. Hey, let's go back to the library and check on our video again, she said excitedly. The other two cheered in excitement and quickly dashed out into the halls after her. Watching them go, Rarity sighed. Those three, she said. I love my sister dearly, but she can get so excited over the silliest things sometimes. All young ones are like that at times, Rex replied. I may not have had any siblings of my own, but there were enough who did in my neighborhood that I became quite acquainted with the notion of what it was like. You do seem to be rather suited for working with them, Rarity replied. Have you been in the teaching profession long? To some extent, Rex answered, usually with smaller groups rather than a class of this size. But I do love to see them learn. Rarity laughed, a light one that reminded him of bells ringing. Well, you've certainly come to the right place, she said. Now, I'm afraid I must be off. I have one more class to get to today. Ta-ta! With that, she headed out the door, leaving Rex to contemplate matters. Professor Ney had no more classes that day, and had told him he was free to look around the school for the last period. Perhaps he could get some other answers this way. Heading into the halls, Rex headed for the cafeteria. While he might not be able to meet everyone in that room, he knew he would at least find Vix Lee there due to the free food that staff were promised. Part 5 Nightblade Knight had not been too thrilled by landing this assignment for a number of reasons. Mainly that few took him seriously from the beginning, and it was hampering his ability to do his job. Mr. Spearhead himself almost refused to let him help out, until Knight proved himself capable by outrunning the teacher around the soccer field going backwards. From there, the teacher was a bit more forthcoming, and most of the students began to respect and listen to him to some degree. Listening to his advice in proper exercise and breathing techniques that he usually did with his fellow ponies in the West Sword Team, as well as proving to be a somewhat decent referee for their game. Blowing the whistle, as he saw what had been told to him was an illegal move, he braced himself for one of the more problematic students. Oh, come on! What now? Rainbow Dash shouted at him, the girl scowling angrily. He had been surprised to see her here, and was a bit taken aback to by seeing the humanized virtue he had spent his life living up to, but he quickly learned to differentiate the two by how this girl acted. You were charging directly at Miss Wind's dash, Knight said dryly, causing the girl to groan loudly. Knight did his best not to show how annoyed he was, and followed up by trying to ease her ego slightly. You may be one of the better players here. Well, duh, I am the captain of the soccer team and every other team here. It was harder to repress his annoyance now, and Knight did a small count of five before continuing on. As I was saying, Miss Dash, as a player you have abided by all the rules, even more so as the captain. In fact, as captain of your team, you have to set an example of what is and what is not acceptable, and flaunting the rules is not acceptable. Oh yeah? She taunted him, with the rest of the students watching and wincing at her mouthing off. What would a stuffed shirt like you know about that? Doing his best to quell his desire to knock some sense into her, he calmly replied, I happen to be the captain of my dueling team back home, and... Ha! Yeah, right! Dash snorted at him, with Mr. Spearhead about to step in when Knight shook his head. An overconfident fool like her would only listen if proven wrong. Come on, race me, Knight said as he loosened up while doing his best to hide the pain in his side although he made no attempt to hide the fact that he was injured. 
even told Mr. Spearhead about it after their race, and let him feel the stitches in his side, as I do not have my equipment with me at the moment. The sword he had found in the Order's treasure room had vanished on him, and he highly doubted that they would let children this immature use real metal blades on each other. I would like to be able to prove to you that I am aware of what I am trying to teach you, as I have been doing this far longer than you. But dude, Dash said, only to get a glare from the teacher. Uh, Mr. Blade, dude, aren't you, like, injured? She and the other students had been present when Mr. Spear had it, had let out a curse after feeling the amount of stitches in his side. Yes, I am, Miss Dash, Knight said as he removed his jacket and tie, giving both to a Miss Hooves to hold on to. But that is neither here nor there. Are you going to listen to me, finally, or are you going to try and prove that you are better than me? Dash glared at him and Knight realized he had just stoked her ego by admitting he was injured and that he thought he could still take her on. "'You're on, dude. Er, sir,' Dash said as she jogged over to him, with Knight finishing his warm-up. "'Where to?' D Knight pointed at the tree on the far side of the field as he walked towards the school itself, with her frowning. "'A simple enough run from here to there, Miss Dash.' he said, as he braced himself against the wall. Any attempt to talk her out of this would only spur her on more, and Knight had no desire to hear whining. Waiting for her to get into position next to him, he turned to the teacher and asked him to count them down. Mr. Spearhead nodded. Five, four, three, two, one, he blew his whistle. Both of them were off with Dash predictably pulling, putting in a lot of effort from the start to get a good lead on him. Knight relied on his years of training that had transferred over into this new body to maintain a steady, heavy run that quickly ate up the ground when Dash began to burn through her initial burst, as well as when she looked back to see how far he was. That is a rookie's mistake, Miss Dash, he lectured her as he caught up to her feeling a small stab of enjoyment as he startled her and simultaneously oh feeling a small stab of enjoyment at her startled and simultaneously annoyed expression it is very hard to move forwards if you are looking backwards he heard her grunt in frustration as he overtook her and he had to bite his lip not to laugh at her wasting even more energy to try and take back the lead his smile quickly turned into a grimace as they reached the tree line, and a sh sharp jolt of pain hit his side. Immediately, Knight slowed down his speed and placed a hand on his stitched-up side, frowning as he felt his warm blood. Ha! I knew you were foot of, full of hot air. Are, are you okay? Dash quickly dropped her cocky attitude when she saw him brace himself against a tree and begin to sit down, holding his side. I will be fine if you get Mr. Spearhead, Knight grunted as another stab of pain hit him, and he turned the wrong way. Go now. Here, let me help you down, sir, Dash said with panic in her voice, reaching out to steady him by placing her hand on his arm. Knight blinked as he found himself suddenly on a cloud in the middle of the sky, the pain in his side gone. Ah! What's going on? Dash shouted causing Knight to spin around to see the blue-skinned girl panicking on his cloud, holding her arms to her side, to the side, legs arched up and her eyes darting around. <coughs> Miss Dash, are you okay? What are you? she shouted at him, before looking down and letting out another piercing shriek, causing him to fold his ears. What happened to my clothes? Miss Dash, please do calm down. Slap! Knight swore, his vision blurry for a moment, before he focused his attention back on the girl who just slapped him. What was that for? Slap! Stop looking at me, you perverted horse thing! She shouted loudly again, causing his ears to lay flat against his head, only for her to reach out and slap him again. Will you stop hitting me? Light. Knight 
said, as he held up a wing to hold off the blows, with the girl only smacking his recently healed wing hard enough to cause minor tears. Not until you tell me what is going on here and give me my clothes back, you pervert! Knight tried to think of something to say, but with her continuous slapping and the fact he was almost at the edge of the cloud, he was unable to come up with anything coherent. There was a sudden flash of multicolored light and a bang of sound, with a familiar raspy voice landing in the middle of them, calling, Whoa, whoa, whoa! Every pony, chill out for a second! What are you? I'm you, Dash. Well, kinda, the mare said, with Knight lowering his wing. Keep it up, Buster, at least until I got her settled. Can you please tell me what is going on here? That pervert wouldn't say anything. Hey, I am no per- Shut it, Knight, the mare said. Look, Dash, Knight, I can explain what's going on. Balance told me enough to help you and the others through this bit. Who is Balance and where are my clothes? Jeez, one second. Let me go ask her for some help with this mind-conjuring stuff. Oh, let me go ask for some help with this mind-conjuring stuff. She huffed to herself, shuffling on the cloud. I can just hear them now. Golly, Dash, you've been dead for almost a thousand years and you still haven't mastered making stuff up in your paradise? She let out a groan before going dead still. Did the pony me just say she's been dead for almost a thousand years? If I say anything, will you try and hit me again? Probably. In my defense, Miss Dash, Knight said with all the snark he could muster, from where we hail from, most don't put much stock in clothes. Still a pervert for gawking at me. She grumbled at him. Believe me, Miss Dash, when I say you do nothing for me. I am only attracted to one pony, and you are not her, Knight huffed, before letting out a sigh as he saw his wing had holes in it again. I hope to the goddesses this doesn't mean I can't fly again for another week or so. Another week? Yes. My group and I were caught in a fight with a racist unicorn that had a grudge against us for blaming him for burning down an old mansion. In that fight, my wing got all cut up, a hammer smashed the ribs on my side, and I got a scar on my eye. What is going on with you people? Honestly? Possible end of the world stuff with the most powerful unicorn in our lifetime, possessed by something that is after us because we're apparently the only ones that can stop it. Knight heard her gulp before a brief moment of silence. And her? That is, well, you, Knight said, shrugging his shoulders. Only she and a few other mares named Rarity Bell, Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Fluttershy, and some other mare lived a thousand years ago who were the elites among oh who were the elites of our goddess princesses before they were all killed during the wedding for the demi love goddess when the creatures called changelings invaded the wedding and their leader blew up the castle they were all in there was another long pause before dash spoke to him again well i used to know those girls maybe your guys and we can help each other I mean, why are you even here, teaching at my school, when you're dealing with your end-of-the-world crisis? Because some pony named Sunset Shimmer stole the last element we need to somehow defeat our enemy and save the world, Knight replied. Wait, she's involved? Dash let out a surprised noise before chuckling smugly. Count me in. Anything to knock her down a peg or ten. Okay, I'm back. The Mare Dash's sudden input caused them to both jump back, with Knight's wing dropping, only for him to snap it back up. Had to agree to a lot of fittings for dresses, but... She paused before letting out an annoyed groan. You're kidding me! I just agreed to several years of dress fittings, and you just did my entire job of explaining stuff to her! Not everything 
I'm still naked here, Dash said, with such dryness that Knight couldn't help himself from snickering. You just think of something basic to you to maintain it, the Mare Dash groaned into her hoof. Anything more complex will require you being focused on it all the time, and poof it will go the moment you lose your concentration. Something basic, huh? The human said before chuckling to herself. Well, this cloud does feel like my bed. Okay, that's cool. Knight turned his head to see that he was now in a floating bedroom in the sky, sitting on the edge of the bed. And I've got clothes on! Yeah, it wasn't that hard to peek into your mind, considering you're a backup element, and pull out this scene to make you more comfortable, human me. The Mare Dash grinned. And since it is night... Both of the mares grinned at that little pun. I'd be wearing my PJs! The human girl, wearing a very large shirt, held her hand out, which the mare instantly smacked with her hoof. Awesome! If you could do this from the start, Dash... Knight said, as she sat down on the edge of the bed. Why didn't you? This caused the Pegasus to stare at him for a few seconds, before flying off the bed and beginning to smack her head against the wall. Wait a tick. Did you just call me a backup element? The human dash asked, as she leaned across the bed to look at the swearing mare. What did you mean by that, Dash? Knight asked, as he walked to the edge of the bed. <coughs> Get the rest of the elements together and we'll talk again then. I just can't... I can't keep you two here much longer, Dash said, as she continued to smack her head against the wall. Just don't touch each other again, okay? And the same goes for the rest of you. All right, Nightblade said. And how do we get back to where we were? That's simple. She stuck her face in his. Wake up! In an instant, Knight's... Nightblade's eyes snapped open, and he found himself staring at an unfamiliar ceiling. Where? You, Mr. Blade, are in the nurse's office, a sharp-toned voice said, as a white-skinned woman, her pink hair carefully done up in a bun, and an unusual-looking hat on her head. She clucked her tongue. I cannot believe you were so foolish as to go running like that and pull your stitches. Fortunately, I was able to redo them for you. But don't go pulling anything like that again. Not until you're fully healed. Believe me, if I can help it, I won't. Nightblade grunted as he rubbed his right eye. He glanced around. Miss Dash, is she here too? In the bed across the room, the woman said. And it sounds like she just woke up too. Yeah, Dash's voice said. I'm here. Before the nurse could react, she was up and out of her bed. Mr. Blade? Did all that really happen? Yes, Nightblade said. It did. Oh, goody. Rainbow Dash sighed. So now what? Now get yourself back into bed, young lady. The nurse gave her a stern look. Aww, Rainbow Dash groaned. Don't awe me, the nurse huffed. You're lucky we aren't calling your parents about this. Yet. Rainbow Dash cringed, and Nightblade wondered what all that was about. Several minutes later, Nurse Redheart had given them both a full examination and pronounced them ready to leave. But don't strain yourself, Mr. Blade, she said. I cannot stress how important that is. I understand, Knight said as he put his jacket back on, while stuffing his tie into his pocket. They were hard enough to do with hooves, and he wasn't even sure how to use these fingers to mimic that headache. I recently just got cleared up after a sparring match that left me like this. I have no desire to wait more time before I can train again properly. Well, you'll have to wait at least a while before you start, she huffed. Honestly. Nightblade sighed as he left her office, Rainbow Dash right behind him. Paige was waiting outside, a look of concern on her face. Are you all right? I've been better, Knight replied. 
but we need to talk, he said, tilting his head at the girl behind him. All of us. Have you seen... Yes, I have indeed seen her, Paige said sharply, looking at Rainbow Dash. Do you have any way to contact people named Fluttershy, Rarity Bell, Applejack, and Pinkie Pie? Yeah, I can call them, she said, pulling out a small square object from her pocket before pausing. If a teacher asks, you let me use my phone for an emergency, okay? Just contact them, Knight groaned, squeezing the bridge of his nose before feeling his stomach rumble. Tell them to meet us in the lunchroom. That's where Viddle and the rest are already waiting for us, Paige said as she looked at Knight. We'll meet you there. They're serving up a taco buffet. I hope that they put some extra kick into some of it. Gotcha, Rainbow Dash said as she began tapping the object and talking into it before pausing. Wait, did she just say, Just do it already! Jerk. This is why I hate working with kids, Knight thought to himself as Rainbow Dash talked away on her phone. So lippy. Same note about Nani Mouse doing all the work on this chapter. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, there was something... Oh, I was going to mention that I noticed Vittle's absence from this chapter. <laughs> I wonder if that's because uh, they don't have a Twilight to meet here. Also, this chapter makes it clear... Oh wait, no, I already did make the chapter that made it clear that there was no time passing on this side. That was last chapter. This chapter, we had five of the six starting out their jobs. We see how they went. Hmm. I don't know what I have to say about this chapter. Um. Uh. Well, I guess I'll see you next chapter. Goodbye, everyone. Have fun. See you later. Thanks for watching. All that.